Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond, and I'm excited to announce we're at the final stages of our latest pond build, and later in this video, we're going to be turning the waterfall pumps on and finishing up this incredible new pond build. And this pond location has a little history to it, because earlier this spring, we built a prawn pond and grew about 5,000 of these overgrown shrimp to feed to the bass in our five-acre pond. And after the prawns reached adult size, we moved them all into the five-acre pond this fall, and now the prawn pond has become the host location for an aquascape regional event. And we have about 50 of the world's most talented pond builders coming in from all over the globe, including England and Canada. And over the past few weeks, I've been extremely impressed with their pond building techniques, landscaping, and artwork. And a lot of their skills will be on full display today as we put the finishing touches on our new pond. And during the pond build, we also had some other exciting events. We captured a live feeding from the Eagle Tower we built this past spring. <laughs> There's nothing more American than that. And another record was shattered as one of our two-inch bass that we stocked in the five-acre pond 15 months ago was caught and weighed in at four pounds, which is incredible growth rates. And you'll also be seeing a fishing competition between Greg the Pond Guy and Ed the Pond Professor. And we're going to pick up right where we left off. If you missed the previous pond build videos, I've got links in the video description. But today we're going to be focusing on tying in the waterfall to the wetland filter. And then we're also going to build an overflow drain from the new pond into the five acre pond. And in our last video, we went ahead and filled up the bottom portion of the pond because it's going to hold a significant amount of water. We've calculated somewhere around 30,000 gallons. And this is where we left off with our nice big waterfall feature. You can see we're using some of those beautiful cedars and oaks that we got out of the woods right here on the property. So you'll be seeing some overhead time lapses and I wanted to capture the entire view because when you have this many contractors and multiple machines working at the same time, it's hard to see the full picture. And Brian and a group of guys in the woods doing what they call moss hunting. And just like with everything else in the project, they like to get the local mosses, ferns, and some aquatic plants that are naturally in this area because we know they'll thrive in this new pond. And here we got Toby from England building a bench and a nice seating area out of a log. And that ties in perfect with the theme of this pond. And we also made a trip to our local nursery where I'm relying heavily on the talented Mr. Jason from Earthworks. And we also brought the boss lady Liz to make sure we got her approval. So this is the fun part, the decorations on a Christmas tree, the landscaping makes all the difference in the world just like the decorations on a Christmas tree. Jason, all the way from Earthworks down in Jacksonville, Florida, what'd you pick out for us? I got a lot of goodies. So uh, Stephen on this one wanted to go ahead and do mostly natural, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. his theme is he wants everything natural, he wants everything like he sees in nature. So everything's going to be green. You'll see some fall colors on it right now, but for the most part, everything's going to be shades of green, natural. And also, this is a farm. He doesn't want to take care of it. So it's mm -hmm. all going to be easy maintenance. Stuff Bald right cypress. we got some nice trees on here. Yeah. Yep. We're doing a water feature. We need yeah. some water, water plants to go by it. That's perfect. Good job. So we got some great looking plants and trees, but this one was new to me. I've heard of weeping willows, and this one's called a weeping cypress. And we got a lot of green grasses and plants to go around the pond's edge as well as a Japanese maple that'll go near the waterfall area. That's some good looking stuff. And in the past couple years, we've planted a lot of oaks and cypress trees out around the five acre pond. So we're continuing with that, with some more bald cypress and oaks. <laughs> and check that out. This one even comes fully equipped with a bird nest. And we're getting a delivery from one of our local sod farms. And if there's one thing I've made a mistake with in previous pond builds, it's erosion control. And since we've moved a lot of dirt around, we're going to be putting sod down on top of it, as well as some other barriers to help hold that in place. So Jason's getting the plants laid out where he wants them. We're still in the middle of construction on the overflow. The beach area is pretty much finished up. Now let's go take a look at the waterfall area. They've been setting boulders for most of the day, and we're getting really close. You can see that last little bend is where it ties into the wetland filter. So it won't be long now. And as we get to the final phases of the project, we've got some guests coming in to take a look at all the progress we've made so far. And I love seeing the kids already out there playing. But unfortunately, with this time of year, the days are shorter and there's just not enough daylight in the day. But if you've ever worked on an aquascape project, you'll know that these are some of the most hardworking, detailed guys out there. We've seen all the elements during this build where it rained for two days straight. So now that we've finally got some good weather, they want to capitalize on it. And throughout the pond build, we had several guys take a break and do some fishing, including Daniel and Houston from Arms Family Homestead. And Houston's a good fisherman. 
And you can check out some more of his catches on his channel. But I got a call from Daniel telling me to come over and check out a big bass he caught. So let's go check it out. Yeah, that's the biggest one we've ever caught out of here. Look at the belly on it. Pretty good sized yeah. fish right there. Yeah, nice one. Who caught it? I did. Nice. So I scanned the fish and it hadn't been caught before. So we added a new pit tag. His fish is 569722. Two. The biggest fish we've caught out here. And he's going to name it what? The goat. Naming it the goat. <laughs> I hear you. All righty. This fish weighs 3.94 pounds, almost twice as big as any other fish that we caught. That's incredible, man. Yeah. Almost a four pounder and they're, <laughs> they're what? A little over a year yeah. old? So obviously this is a big female, but I'm extremely excited with these kind of growth rates. A four pounder in around 15 months is approaching a three pound per year growth rate. And for a bass, that is incredible. So we got a lot of landscaping on the back side of the pond done. And you can really start to see it coming together. The last thing the guys are tying in is the waterfall. So that's the perfect time to bring the family out and get their first impression. <laughs> and obviously the beach sand drew Sarah right in. And Oliver was happy because he got to dip his toes in the water. And Sarah didn't mind the construction going on one bit. She was determined to explore every inch of the new pond and already making good use of that log Ed set in there for him. So we're just about finishing up for the day. The guys have worked extremely hard all day and were determined to finish the waterfall before they caught it quits. And one last project was getting the big log that Toby carved into a seating area set in place right there in that peninsula area. <laughs> so Ed's thought of everything and Toby executed this nice wooden bench. We'll be able to see it a little bit better tomorrow in the daylight, but that's pretty awesome. Nice job, guys. Thank you. And when the sun goes down, you know who's gonna come out to play. And that's one of the owls that we call Hooter. And I can just see it in his face right now. He's saying, man, this thing is nice. But Hooter's been with us a long time and would frequently fly out to the island and use it as his hunting grounds when we were building the five acre pond. So good to see him joining in on this one. And today's cookout is brought to you by HelloFresh. And if you live out in a remote location like our farm, it's a perfect fit because they provide all the meat, vegetables, and ingredients for a full cooked meal directly to your doorstep. And it's very simple. You just hop on their website, pick a few meals out, and they have over 40 options each week. And for this week, I chose pecan crusted chicken, bistro steak, and chicken and bacon ranch pasta. And the thing I really love about HelloFresh is they provide a cheat sheet for each meal. So one side's gonna have all the ingredients that are included, but if you flip it over on the back, you'll see all the pots and pans and cookware you need to bust out. And then it gives you step-by-step -step instructions with pictures included that make it really easy to learn new recipes. And today we're gonna try out the bistro steak. It's the classic steak, potato, and salad combination. And you get started by chopping up the potatoes, and adding a little olive oil to them. Then seasoning the steak with salt, pepper, and garlic. And the first thing we're gonna do is pan sear the steak for a couple minutes on each side, then move it into the oven and cook it at 450 degrees for four to eight minutes. And we're also gonna cook the potato wedges in the oven at the same time. And while we wait for those to cook, we're getting the toppings added to the salad. And as always, I'm very impressed with the high quality ingredients. And walking through each step of the recipe was extremely easy. So I'm a big fan of HelloFresh, and if any of you are interested in trying them out, you can get free breakfast for life with code POGBASSFREE at HelloFresh.com. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. You can check out the link in the video description or scan the QR code, and you can customize these meals based on your needs and also save time and money by not having to go to the grocery store. And each meal takes 30 minutes or less to cook. It's going to be tough to beat that, folks. So we had some of the contractors spend the night out here on the farm and I had to come over here and admire Jason's rig. When it comes to camping, that's a pretty incredible setup. So getting started the next morning, we got Trevor piping in the water that'll be coming from the well. We also got more trees and landscaping to do and all the stones are set for the waterfall. The only thing that remains is a little edge work. And now that it's daylight, we can finally see some of Toby's craftsmanship. And we had one other great idea, and that was to take a slab that I cut out of the fallen crimson oak tree and use it as the back for this new seating area. So I'm excited to see how that turns out. <laughs> and they also decided to cut some cup holders into the armrest right here. So these guys have thought of it all. And Greg dug us out a trench, and we're going to place that two-inch pipe coming from the well down in the trench and tie it into the pond, which will pump about 100 gallons per minute. We'll take the nut and tighten it down. So we want to make sure it's a pretty clean. But, and it's actually fitted to that bulkhead 
sizing appropriately. And the guys did a good job with the overflow. You can see the rocks leading down to the five acre pond that also has the liner beneath it. And you know we're getting close when the sod pallets start coming out. But look who decided to fly over. We got the geese in their V formation. And now they're working on running three inch lines from the intake bay up to the wetland filter. One of them will run 24 seven and the other one's called a party pump that just sends a bunch of extra water up if you really want to get those waterfalls flowing. <laughs> and while the guys are laying inside, they're scaring some of those baby tilapia off the bank and those bass are out there harassing them. Uh, everything is falling in place. Pond is gonna continue getting filled up. The pond guy himself is rinsing everything down. That is his favorite job. He he's self-proclaimed actually. He loves to rinse all that stuff down. It's an important piece of the equation. We wanna start the ecosystem out nice and fresh. Uh, sod is going in in the back. Plants are already started going in and we're also started doing more of the grading work because because of this massive slope, I've talked about this multiple times, you always, always, always have to think of runoff scenarios. I don't mind rainwater coming into a pond if it's coming off of a roof or a hard surface, but coming over many, many acres of farmland, it's gonna bring in lots of nutrients into the pond. For the bass pond, that's great because he actually adds fertilizer into the pond to increase plankton blooms. You know, I'm a bio guy, biology stuff. The food chain starts with plankton. Plankton need to eat something. Plankton are actually growing from photosynthesis, from sunlight, but they also need dissolved nutrients in the water. So if you're trying to grow large, large fish, you wanna have excess nutrients in the water, you wanna have a sunny location, that plankton will explode. The plankton will be fed upon by small little fish. The small fish get eaten by the bigger fish, and then it works its way up the food chain, and that's how you get some monster, monster bass. But in our recreational ponds, I wanna control that. I want to I want to manage the water. I don't mind having plankton, but I want to have it in specific areas. I'm actually looking for zooplankton. Zooplankton are also small. Uh, they actually will eat the phytoplankton, which is what gives us that green water color. Everybody always hates the green water, but really it is very very important stuff. It's part of the ecosystem. So we're trying to set up all that balance. Starts with your runoff. When you're looking at a watershed. The water features are a direct relationship to the watershed itself. The high alpine areas up in the Sierra Mountains, Lake Tahoe, lots of rock, very poor nutrient soils. Those are gonna have really, really clean, clear water because there's not a lot of nutrients in the runoff. So that's what I'm trying to mimic. I wanna mimic that type of a look. I wanna have an alpine looking deep water pool where his family could uh, kick back and enjoy it. We're gonna have water lilies and we're gonna have this beautiful tranquil spring-like setting all the time, but I need to control it. So I'm thinking of all that runoff going around the outside perimeter. I know that was a long explanation, but that's my job. I love to explain all these different things in detail because that's how you learn. You have to understand how all the different pieces and parts are connected to one another because that truly is life on planet Earth. Nothing stands by itself. So I love wrapping all this stuff around, getting your, your mind around ecology and what we're gonna end up with at the end of the day is gonna be one spectacular water feature for decades to come. And now we're down to the last few hours and it's critical that we get all of this finished up because most of the guys are heading out today and we want to get the waterfall turned on before they leave. And a lot of guys are focusing on the edge work. And that's important because these guys do an incredible job of hiding that liner with all the different logs, boulders, and decorative rocks. And the excavator's also finishing up doing some grading work. And Ed requested one last tree for the beach area. And we needed one with a nice diameter because it's going to act as a retaining wall to keep all that dirt from washing into the beach area. So we found one last good long cedar tree. <laughs> and I don't know what to think about Greg sometimes, but he's full of positivity and keeps everybody in good spirits. We got Ed working on the edges and also starting to plant some aquatic plants. So a little bit of foam. It's not just for waterfall. Now it will hold tight and root right there and hopefully with the water keeping the log moist that moss will flourish. So while we were in Stephen's back 40 looking for some good indigenous ferns and moss, we came across this aquatic plant which was growing in kind of a marsh setting that's on the lower edge of the property. And it's Golden Club, it's an aquatic plant or a marginal. 
And anytime you can uh, incorporate indigenous plants like the ferns and marginals, they're going to thrive uh, because they're already acclimated to the, to the area. So this is neat. This is something Stephen will always be able to remember that came from his property. Yet another thing like a large percentage of this uh, build. And uh, we'll put it right here and he can uh, keep up with the growth of it and showcase it and enjoy it. He's the man. All right, what we got here? He's putting in a local swamp milkweed, and it's the host plant for the monarch butterfly. That is they, awesome. They feed on it with the, the nectar, and their uh, larvae eat the plants, and then they actually absorb some of the toxin from the milkweed, and that gives them a natural deterrent to birds. <laughs> That's awesome. That's incredible. Uh, nice. All right, the wetland filter is now complete. We even got some plants added up here in this area. And as you can see, this is where the waterfall is gonna start, going down this winding stream into a series of cascading waterfalls into the main pond. So Sarah's always been fascinated with machinery. And back when we started the pond build, I made her a promise that before it was over, I'd let her be the operator so she could say she helped us build the pond. So needless to say, she was thrilled when she got to hop on the dingo and deliver some topsoil. But also a big shout out to Jason and the Aquascape crew not only do they work extremely hard and build these beautiful ponds, but all the guys are happy to stop what they're doing and teach you about the process and techniques of building these ponds, and in this case, even taking time with the kids. So it really has been a pleasure working with this group of guys, and I can't say enough good things about them. What you doing, Greg? Uh, this is always my job. Very important to understand wrist action <laughs> when you're washing down the rocks. <laughs> So we got the two inch well water piped in and it also creates a little mini waterfall when it's turned on and that'll take us about five hours to fill up this 30,000 gallon pond. So by now you should be starting to see the full picture and what started out a few weeks ago as a design in Ed's head is now turning into this incredible water feature. But some of my favorite visitors to stop by this week were a pair of bald eagles that started using the tower. And if you'll pay close attention to the dock area, the eagles started catching on to those pellet feeders that go off three times a day. <laughs> and each time they'd go off, the eagles would fly down and try to snag one of those bluegills. And in the beginning, they'd get one or two attempts and weren't that successful. But I have noticed in the past, it seems that eagles need the fish to be right up on the surface. And it seems like ospreys have a little better luck when it comes to diving down and getting those subsurface fish. But these eagles were persistent and it didn't take long for one of them to finally snag a bluegill. <laughs> and right when he was about to enjoy his snack, the eagle that was sitting above him flew off and startled him, and he almost lost the bluegill through the cracks. So he had to spend a little time solving that problem and fending off his catch from the other eagle. But he eventually figured that out and got to enjoy his meal. So next up is getting that retaining wall set by using that cedar tree and getting it cut to length. And they'll use the other piece of that tree to build another retaining wall on the back side of the pond. And while you're watching this last time lapse, see if you can find the cryptic message and all of the moving pieces and chaos that's going on. I'll reveal what it is in just a moment. But the guys are putting the finishing touches on the landscaping and working their way out with the last little bit of grading and sod work. And for this pond, we use zoysia sod. It does really good in this area of South Alabama. And we have a lot of sod farms in this area. And that's one that they recommended. And we wanted a nicer lawn area around this pond, as opposed to just the standard bahia grass that we put around the five acre pond. But it does kind of give it that golf course vibe. And if you missed that cryptic message earlier, Mid-South Ponds, took the opportunity to utilize this advertising space. <laughs> so shout out to Mid-South Ponds. And that is one beautiful pond, folks. I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. We're basically finished up with everything. The waterfall is now tied in. Now there's only one thing left to do, and that's turn the pumps on and watch this pond come to life. But a huge shout out to all the contractors that showed up for this pond build. I'll forever be thankful for all the hard work. This was such an incredible project to be a part of. It took months of planning. We got materials hauled in from all over the U.S., including 100 tons of rock from Wisconsin. 
beach sand hauled in from the Gulf Coast, and a pond that went from looking like this to being transformed into this, I truly am at a loss of words. So there's one last thing to do, let's turn the waterfall on. So it works by pumping the water from the main pond up into the wetland filter where that water overflows down the first waterfall, then creates a stream down to the next cascading waterfalls. And that process of using the boulders and the wood to create those natural looking waterfalls is exactly the look I was going for. So a big shout out to Ed the Pond Professor and this beautiful waterfall creation. So let's take a second and listen to some of the sounds it creates. Man, that was incredible. But as I've already mentioned several times, the Aquascape guys like to work. And even though the job was already done and the pond was already built, several of them stayed around to help finish out the landscape work and even stayed well into the night where we got to see the lights come on and sit and admire what everyone just built. And throughout the week, we had several of the contractors and family members stop and do a little fishing. So let's check in on some of their catches. To start out with, we had Houston helping Sarah catch her first bass. Get him, Sarah. I'd say that right there pretty much answers that question. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. All right, we got Brian, one of the contractors out here doing a little fly fishing. Brian, you don't happen to have that picture of that fish you caught this morning, do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, let's, let's see it. All right. So he caught one of the smaller fish that, uh, that hatched this spring, and it was pretty good size. Yeah, it was probably about six inch. And what'd you catch it on? On this clouser, yellow okay. clouser. Uh, he was pretty Check fierce and uh, <laughs> put up a good fight. Felt like a three pound bass on a fly rod. <laughs> that's one of our first uh, bass that were actually hatched here in the Crimson Oak Pond, so that's pretty cool. All right, got Greg and Ed out here. We're gonna do a little friendly fishing competition. The rules are simple. First fish wins, any species. All right. uh, I already saw how Houston won, so I'm starting. <laughs> hey! I'm not the best fisherman. I don't have the patience for this sport. You need your wheels upside down. It's not about patience, it's the experience. Yeah. I remember going out with my dad 50 years ago hanging out, sitting on a boat, sitting on the dock, being enthralled by all the little fish that were found in and around the dock. I would actually put my fishing pole down and actually hop in the water, <laughs> go snorkeling, looking underneath the dock, looking for stuff, finding clams, mussels, crayfish, all these little fishes and stuff like that, as well as turtles and frogs. And I'd be fishing at the same time. No better place, in my opinion, to learn about life than sitting on a dock. Keep them talking. Keep them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you leave it down, you let it sink to the bottom, and then you can kind of wiggle that rod tip, and that puts a little action on the bait. Right. Of course. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Chopping his bite. <laughs> Trying to let it go. That's a nice looking fish. Yes, yes. The That's underdog wild. is the first one to hook up. Nice. <laughs> 30 nice. to 1. Woo! Got him. I win. <laughs> <laughs> Am I, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, tasting it. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Not every day you can... It's definitely bigger than Greg's. <laughs> he beat me <laughs> faster, but that one definitely is a nicer fish. God, that is gorgeous. So let's see if he's been caught before. He has been caught. 56, 9, 5, 6, 8. <laughs> awesome. What a perfect ending to an amazing journey. <laughs> and now that the waterfalls are running and the pond is built, we had one last mission, and that was for everyone that was still here to catch a bass out of the Crimson Oak Pond. So we all piled out on the dock. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was like it was bigger than oh, it yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Never been caught. Oh, you no. want to name one? 
All right, so Trevor's fish is five six nine nine eight eight. You know what you want to name him yet, or are you gonna think about it? We're, we're gonna name him Haggard Fish. Haggard Fish, is it? <laughs> Instagram channel. Name. All right, nice one, man. All right, we got the sun setting. The pond is built. Everybody out here catching a bass right before the sun goes down. Hey guys, I just can't say thanks enough. I appreciate all the hard work this week. You guys are amazing. You're welcome. Thank you. Beautiful Thank pond. You. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Who you got there? Haggard fish. <laughs> yeah, called Haggard fish again. <laughs> all right. All right, I'm gonna scan them real quick. This fish has been caught before five, six, nine, seven, three, six. Awesome. <laughs> got one. I got him. All right, this fish has been caught. Fifty-seven zero zero two seven. Nice. Hold on, down. Turn around. Got him. <laughs> what do you think about that, Toby? Yeah. Your first bass yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah. One of the bigger ones for sure. How do you hold them? All right, this fish has been caught. 57 Got another one. Oh, I got a big one. Bubba caught the, oh, the, the biggest bass of the day. <laughs> <laughs> got him. We're setting a record out here. Everybody's going to catch one today. Is that All right. One? Is that your first uh, bass? First bass, yeah. Okay, nice, nice. nice. This one's been caught. 56, 9, 5, 4, 8. There, there we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, this one's been caught 570134. Nice one, Gabe. All right, one last nighttime shot of the waterfalls. Man, what a beauty. So my hat's off to this Aquascape crew and the incredible job they've done. And if you're looking to build a pond of any size, do me a favor and reach out to one of these guys that's closest in your area, and I guarantee you they'll take good care of you. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Bill, and I'm with Brothers Water Gardens out of Texas City, Texas. I'm a uh, certified Aquascape contractor, and I can be found at brotherswatergardens.com. Awesome, man. We appreciate you coming out. Yes, thank sir. You. Thank you. All right, down here at the deer plot, got Toby again with us from the UK, and we're gonna do a quick questionnaire with Toby. So, what's the, like the biggest difference you've seen here in the U.S. versus the UK, like the food or the... yeah, the food, definitely the food. <laughs> so, what do you, you think um, about it? Yeah, yeah, it's so good here. Uh, the portion sizes are massive, but yeah, yeah, really enjoying the food. <laughs> so much better than the UK. Anything in particular? Uh, peach cobbler. Peach yeah, cobbler, yeah, 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 that was yeah a life changing awesome. experience. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that. Um, Bucky's as well. Bucky's, Bucky's yeah. <laughs> it is. It sure is. <laughs> yeah. It's a once in a lifetime experience. All right, man. Well, hey, again, we appreciate you coming all the way from the UK. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we got the man here that's been in the excavator the entire time. Who we got? Chris Suing with Nature's Recreations out of St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, I appreciate you coming out. Thanks for having us. It's been a blast. Hi, my name's Greg Gill. I'm with Eastern Iowa Landscape Services. We're in Muscatine, Iowa. We're a uh, full certified pond installer and we do a lot of other outdoor services as far as patios, walls, anything you need in the backyard, we're there for you. Awesome. Hey, this is the, the heavy hitter, the heavy lifter. <laughs> Appreciate you coming out. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Hey, everyone. My name is Mike Hecker. I'm with Flying Creek Water Scheme, Zoda Virginia, Saskatchewan, Canada. We're uh, a pond to water feature company out of there. And right now, we're down in uh, Robertsdale, Alabama. Bass. Awesome. Time. All the way down from Canada. Hey, we appreciate you coming out. Yep, appreciate you having us. Yeah. Hey, it's Brian Dolly with the Fishman of Birmingham, Alabama. Back again at Bama Bass Part 2, Stevens Recreation Pond Build. Excited to be here. We're putting the finishing touches, the, the detail, we call it the critical 10%. Things like moss that we put around the driftwood, and then we're putting some aquatic plants in little tucks to soften up the hard look of the boulders. Yep. and it'll look instantly aged and like it's been here forever and he was with us on our first pond build in the backyard pond so hey we appreciate you coming down for this one as well thank you thank you steven hey guys jason duffney with earthworks here in jacksonville florida uh, my name is guy edwards with big rock pond this is joel mccall and Kristen spiker and we are here to show up and show out for aquascape and uh, bama bass Awesome. Where are you out of, guy? Uh, Gaston, Alabama. Gaston, Alabama. Some local Alabamians. Yep. Hey, I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you, sir. We got Trevor over here doing some edge work. Trevor, tell us about where you came in from. Well, I came in with Aquascape from the Chicagoland area. I'm with their tech department, so 
You know, I'm in the office most of the time, but I love getting my hands dirty. Hey, we appreciate you coming out here. Of course, I think. Pleasure, my pleasure. Hey, I'm Mac McCaleb um, from here in South Alabama. I uh, do lawn care and landscaping in the area. And after this experience, I'm thinking about adding ponds to the services I provide. Awesome. So I'm really happy to be here. It's awesome. Uh, and it's Max Landscaping, Max right? Landscaping, that's right? Awesome. Hey, he's the closest one out of Foley, Alabama, so just down a little south of us. Appreciate you coming out. Thanks a lot. All right, who we got here? Dion McCullough. John McGowan. Tim Hadjik. Gabe Phillips. We're with Amen Corner Ponds out of Aiken, South Carolina. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming out. Thanks a yeah, lot. Sure. Hey, I'm Amanda. Hey, I'm Toby. I'm Kelsey. And we're from Aquas Game. Out of? St. Charles, Illinois. Awesome, thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Russell Sabo from New Hall, Minnesota. My company is Potenscapes uh, and Waterfalls, and uh, having a great time. Awesome, man, appreciate you coming out. Thanks. I'm Brian from Aquatopia Water Gardens. And where'd you come from? Uh, Southern California. Southern California. How far of a trip was that? Uh, it wasn't too bad. It's a three hour flight, pretty much. Okay. Two, four hour flight. Okay. Hey, we appreciate you coming out from California. Thank you. I'm Austin, I'm with the Pond Company. I'm Matt, also with the Pond Company. And where are you guys out of? We're out of Bloomington, Minnesota. Bloomington, Minnesota. Hey, I appreciate you guys coming out today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Roy here from Aqua Landscapes, uh, Carroll Stream, Illinois. Hey, I appreciate you coming out, Roy. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. you having us here. Uh, Nathaniel Goff with Goff Salon Care. Brian Goff. Where are you guys out of? We're out of uh, Lowell, Kentucky. You can email us at goffsaloncare at gmail.com. At gmail.com. All right. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming down. Thanks yeah, no for all problem. the hard work. It's been thank awesome. You. Hey, I'm Bubba Hogan. I'm with Mid-South Ponds in Memphis, Tennessee. Hey, we appreciate all the help this week, Bubba. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Sean Baker. I am uh, Ed and Greg, social media community manager for Aquascape. And uh, I've been out here uh, at the Bama Bass Build just shooting a bunch of content for social media. Awesome, man. Hey, that's a full-time job, isn't it, working for Greg? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just Greg himself. And then I got another full-time working with yeah, that. Yeah. All right, man, I appreciate you coming out. Yeah, man. All right, Lisa McGinnis here. I produce and film and edit and do all kinds of stuff for um, Ed's channel. We've been working together since the beginning of his channel, and it's been a true honor meeting all these different YouTubers and collaborations and everything. Four years now, we finally got our silver play button. It's a lot <laughs> nice. of accomplishments, but nice. it's these types of situations being able to see the beach go in and your kids coming in and playing and those moments when the cameras turn off and the lights come on and we're all just sitting around enjoying the nice. beautiful artwork that they do. Nice. Hey, That's we appreciate like. you coming out. Thank you very much. Thanks. And as Ed mentioned earlier, this pond will be around for decades and I know one little boy and girl that are going to love growing up learning about ecosystems and the life cycles of nature right here at this pond. And the last thing to do is name the pond and I'm going to leave that contest open for one final day. Leave a comment down below on what you think we should name it. We're also going to be stocking it with fish in our next video. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're just a handful away from a million. And thanks again to everyone involved. Hope you all enjoyed this video. And we will see you all next time.